Y'all been waiting for this one. Turn it up. <laughs> oh my God, y'all, these are heavy. Hold on. Call me Mrs. Thor. Anyway. I have read every single Mariana Zapata book and I am here to tell you everything I know. <laughs> Which is quite a lot because I have so much knowledge in this noggin right here. Hello, shoddy bays. Hello, besties. The video you have been waiting for, for quite some time as per my watch, <laughs> it's finally here. The ultimate guide to Mariana Zapata books. I did an ultimate guide video for Colleen Hoover and a lot of you asked for me to do it for some of my other favorite authors. And if you do not know, Colleen Hoover and Mariana Zapata are my top favorite authors of all time. And I have spent this entire time finishing up the books I had to read from her so I can make this guide amazing and hopefully as close to perfect as I can get it for you. The reason why it took so long was because I was working on it. I promise that I did not forget about it. I know you guys have been waiting, but it's finally here and I hope that the wait is over. What? That did not make sense. I hope that the wait is worth it. <laughs> I am gonna go through absolutely everything I can think of in this video. I'm gonna tell you what order I think you should go in. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each book with no spoilers, don't worry. I'm gonna tell you what I rated each one, I'm gonna tell you my top favorites, and then at the very, very end, I will tell you how they all connect. There are no spoilers in this entire video, but if you wanna skip the part of how they all connect because you wanna be surprised, completely understandable. So I'll leave that at the end so that it's easier for you to skip. Anyway, um, let's get started. First, first, of course. Cheers, let's sip. It's nice to have an Aaron Blackford while I'm wearing an Aaron Blackford. You know what I mean? I like to represent in all ways. Anyway, let's begin. So first and foremost, let's discuss reading order. I know that a lot of people have different opinions on what order you should read MZ books in. I personally am a fan of my order, obviously, since I'm the one that did. I'm a fan of this order that I'm gonna tell you right now. Ready? Hold on, let me grab the books um, for visual reference for my visual learners out there. Please hold. This is the order that I personally think you should go in if you are planning to read every single one. This is release order and I think it's the best way to do it because that way you do not miss any connections, you do not miss any little references and you get kind of the full experience. However, they are all standalone so you can read it in whatever order you want and it's not gonna affect you much. It's just if you wanna see the little references and if you want to understand the connections this is the order that I would go in um but once again not necessary all standalones so if you want to just pick whichever ones interest you feel free to do so you know if you want to take a screenshot of this so you can have the order hold on let me pose did you get it I'm glad <laughs> oh my god don't drop it no no <gasps> of course of course just of course of course <laughs> nothing can go right Right back. Oh my god, are you joking? Everything's fine. As I was saying before my books very rudely said bye bye um, that's the order I think you should go in, release order. And even if you're reading only ones that interest you, um, sorry, I'm looking at my books. That's why I'm not staring at you. But even if you're reading only the ones that interest you, I would still try to go in release order. You know what I mean? Like you could still go in release order even if you're just reading the ones that interest you. Does that make any sense? Now that we've discussed reading order, I'm going to go through every single one of these and I'll tell you a little bit of what they're about, a little summary, and I'll tell you what I rated. Before I get started on talking about these books, let me just say that every single one of these is from the female's point of view. So there's just one POV in MZ books and they are all slow burn. So be ready to wait for the couple to get together. If you are not in the mood for that, I would say wait to read an MZ book until you're ready because if you don't like slow burns, you might not enjoy these as much. I'm a big fan of slow burn. It is my favorite type of books because I get really bored when the couple gets together Together. It's a really bad trait of mine. You get crumbs of all the couples and you get to see them together even though they're not together. You get to see them want each other and you just know that the love is there even if you have to wait 600 pages for them to touch. You know? Starting off with MZ's very first book, Lingus. Can you even see that? It is so bright. Oh my god. Can you see it? <laughs> So this book has a very interesting plot that I have never seen another book have. So basically this girl Kat Berger goes to a porn convention because she happens to love porn. And there she meets a guy who makes her laugh, who she feels very comfortable with and instantly connects with. However, he happens to be a porn star, Robbie Lingus. And that's essentially what this book is about. This book is more so romantic comedy vibes rather than like slow burn, angst, romance. 
like the other ones. Yeah, I would say this falls more into the comedy category. With that being said, I hated it. So, <laughs> okay, I rated this book a two star. I did not like it. Let me explain myself. The relationship felt very rushed. Um, I did not connect to the characters. The love interest was kind of cool, but nothing too special. But then Kat was the most annoying main character ever. I just hated being inside her mind. Something that I really did enjoy about this book was the epilogue. The epilogue was really good. Yeah, that's it. It sucks this is the first one I'm talking about, but listen, it's her first book. So it makes sense as to why there are so many things that I did not like about it. You can see the evolution as the books go, you know? This one was just not it for me. Some parts were kind of funny, which was why I rated it two star, but there was a lot of slut shaming, which I fucking hate. There was a lot of like, oh, this person does porn, so therefore they are sluts. This person is wearing this, so therefore they are sluts. And I absolutely hate that. So that was a big part of why this book was such an ick for me. I honestly just finished it because I hate DNFing and because I wanted to be able to read every single book so I can give my full opinion on it for you guys. So I did this for you, okay? <laughs> But I wouldn't recommend this one. I really would not. This would be an MZ book that I would skip if you're not wanting to go through her whole backlist. And yeah, I really don't have much to say about this one. It's just there. Moving on. <laughs> okay, rough start, rough start. But let's go to the second one. Underlock. Okay, okay, underlock. Yes, yes. So Underlock follows Iris Taylor and she has been unemployed for six months. She moves back home to Austin and needs to get a job fairly quickly. And her brother gets her job because he's part of a motorcycle club. And one of the guys in the motorcycle club owns a tattoo shop called Pins and Needles. And he says, hey, I could get you a job there. Totally fine. And she says, okay. A tattoo parlor sounds good. I don't have any tattoos, but why not? Let me go work there. And the boss happens to be Mr. Dex Locke. He's a very grumpy, very tattooed, hot man who happens to be very against Iris from the very beginning. Y'all, I adored, I adored this book. And listen, if you don't know this about me, I have an infatuation. Hello? How do you say that word? Infatuation. Infatuate. In fact, <laughs> excuse the fuck out of me. Hold on. I really, really love Jax Teller from Sons of Anarchy. And in Sons of Anarchy, it is a motorcycle club. And <laughs> I got it. When I picked up this book, I kid you not, I only picked it up because I saw the motorcycle and I was like, Jax Teller. Let me live my Jax Teller romance fantasies through Underlock. And let me just tell you, it didn't disappoint 100%. Yeah, Dex Lock was everything. This book was everything. I really liked it. I rated it five stars and I regret nothing. I know a couple people that really hate this book, but I am one of those that absolutely loves it. I would suggest you reading it and having your own opinion on it um, because it's definitely worth the try. It is also one of her least slow burns, I would say. So if you're just getting into MZ and you really want a book that'll just hopefully get you right away, I would say Underlock is a good one. Dex is absolutely everything. One of my favorite quotes from him, let me read it to you because it's literally in the back of the book. That's how amazing the quote is. Ready? Babe, I've handpicked everything and everyone in here. I know what I want and I get what I want and I keep what's mine. <laughs> One of the things I didn't love about this book was Iris is a little bit too whiny for me, but she's still amazing and she's been through so much and I loved seeing that in this book. Iris is not one of those very, very perfect characters. She's definitely flawed, but I loved seeing that. I think that was one of my favorite parts in this book. Anyway, under lock, get it? Dex lock, under lock. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I think you should read this one. I rated it five stars. Coffee break. Not me talking about two books and then instantly needing a coffee break. <laughs> Next up, Shoddy Bay's Colty. Okay. <laughs> when I first started MZ, Colty was one of the ones I was most anticipating because as I've said before, I'm Brazilian. So the only sport that I'm semi-interested in is soccer. It's the only one I kind of know a little bit about. I don't watch it. Don't get me wrong. However, you know, Brazil in the World Cup. I do watch that. I don't religiously follow it or anything. So I don't really know why I even brought it up. But th this book is about soccer. So this book follows Sal Casillas and she is a soccer player. Yeah, as I've said before, on a professional team. And ever since she was a kid, she used to be obsessed with this soccer player named Rainer Colty. Loved watching him play, got the biggest crush on him. Basically loved the guy, worshiped him. And he was part of the reason why she was so confident in becoming a soccer player. And years later, now that she's a professional player, he retires and becomes her coach. So what do you do when the guy you worshiped as a kid becomes your coach? And what do you do when he's not at all what you expect, when he's actually the rudest, grumpiest, and you do not like him whatsoever now? 
Well, read Colty and find out. Sal is 27 and Colty is 39, if I'm not mistaken. So there is an age gap in this one. It's not an age gap you really feel in your bones, but it is an age gap nonetheless. Amazing, amazing. I love Colty. I rated it five stars. I would rate it infinity if I could. I am obsessed with this book. Listen, listen, once again, like Underlock, Colty is a book that a lot of people have different opinions on. A lot of people love it and a lot of people absolutely hate it. Um, I am on the loving it side. I would try it out, see if you like it. It is definitely worth it in my opinion. Sal and Colty's relationship was one of my favorites in MZ books. It went from enemies to friends to best friends to lovers. I would try it. I did rate it five stars and I do love Colty. Next up, we've got Rhythm, Chord, and Malekin. Um, I hope I am saying that right. This book is a rock star romance. Basically, you have a Gabby who goes on tour with her twin brother. She goes to be like the merch girl and he is on a band. And the band that's touring with her brother, the headline band, happens to have Sasha Malikin in it as the lead singer. And when Gabby meets him, things get interesting because she is very attracted to this a very hot, very tattooed, lead singer of the band. I think everybody's all jealous and shit because I'm like the lead singer of the band, dude. Anyway, this book goes through three different continents in one tour. They live out of the tour bus. It has that rock star vibe. I did not like it though. <laughs> I love the title, right? Rhythm, Chord, and Malikin because it's the rhythm and chord um, tour and then Malikin's obviously his name. So I really enjoyed, well, play on words there, but now let me talk about what I didn't like. <laughs> I rated it three star. Once again, kind of like Lingus, the relationship felt very rushed, felt very insta-lovey to me, which is weird because MZ is known for his slow burns. And then Sasha felt like too nice to be a rock star. Like he was a rock star, but he was so nice that I was a little bit thrown off by that. And then Gabby was just so annoying. And it was kind of that same thing in Lingus where the language was very misogynistic and a lot of slut shaming, a lot of she's wearing that, so she's a slut, a lot of, um, jokes that I was not a fan of. Just the language in general, I did not click with in this book. I really wanted to put it down, but once again, did it for you, not me, not Hermione, you. So you're to blame for rhythm and lingus, okay? You're to blame. <laughs> No, but actually I hated it. The language, I didn't click with it. I didn't vibe with the jokes they were making. The friend group was a bunch of guys in the band and then Gabby, so the jokes were very aggressive. I don't know how to explain it besides misogynistic and slut shaming. Holty has one or two jokes like that that I wasn't a fan of, but I got past it because it wasn't that much, but this one was just all over the place and I am not a fan. I did like the rock star setting in the tour bus and going on different continents. That was cool, but that's about it. That's all I have to say about this one. I would skip it if I were you, but if you're interested in it, you could possibly like it. You could have a different opinion than me, of course, but I wouldn't bother, honestly. Listen, at least y'all can see that I'm being very honest with you. This video is for you to pick which MZ books you wanna read, and she's clearly my favorite author. I love, love, love MZ. As you can see, I'm not lying about these opinions I have. I'm not sugarcoating shit. If I loved it, I loved it, and if I hated it, I hated it, and it's fine, you know? Just because I did not like the book does not mean I don't like the author and I don't like the person, you know? Next up. <laughs> I'm excited for this one. Are we ready? The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I'm already excited. I'm already getting giddy. If I had to pick one MZ book that is my favorite of all time, it is very difficult, but it would be The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. I constantly come back to this book. I've read this book three times, which is disturbing because it's really long. Why am I reading it so much? Um, <laughs> Anyway, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, it has a special place in my heart. I love it so much. I would sleep with it every single night if it wasn't incredibly weird. Is that weird? I'm not doing it. It's fine. So this book follows Vanessa Mazur and she's the assistant to top defensive end, Mr. Aiden Graves. Um, <laughs> me getting giddy saying his name. Okay, she's his assistant and she's basically everything to him. She does everything around the house, um, all of his emails, phone calls, cleans, cooks, just does the whole shebang for him and has done so for years. However, he has treated her not very nicely. He doesn't even say good morning to her when she comes by, so not very polite, not the nicest man alive, you know? Um, but she still stays and she still does everything for him until one day she just blows up and she says, fuck this, I do not get paid enough for this, goodbye, and quits. And then um, a little while later, Mr. Graves comes to her door begging for her to come back and with a proposition that absolutely shocks her to her core. I'm not gonna tell you what the proposition is. A lot of people, when they talk about this book, they do tell you 
um, what Aiden wants from her. I am not gonna tell you because I feel like that's a spoiler, but you could easily search it up and find out if you wanna know. But he asks something of her and she doesn't know how to say no. How do you say no to the guy who is so used to everybody saying yes? I adore this book. I have no complaints. It is five million stars for me. It is a very slow burn, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it. Please read The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. This was my favorite. It is so good. Oh my God. I don't know what to even say about this book to get you to read it, but just trust my opinion. Do you trust me? Then fucking read it. <laughs> anyway, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me definitely five million stars. <laughs> Yo, I love it so much. I'm gonna move on. Next up, we've got Wait For It. Okay, so this book follows Diana Castillas and she is adulting and finds it very difficult, you know, much like the rest of us. She inherited two kids in a very painful way. I'm not gonna tell you, you'll find out in the book. And she has a dog, she has a new house, she has an amazing job. However, she does not have a boyfriend, she does not have a husband, but does she need one of those? She does not think so, until she meets a next door neighbor, Dallas Walker, and everything changes. <laughs> This book, once again, also gets me giddy. I adore it. Dallas is one of my favorite book boyfriends ever. He is so grown. He is so amazing, just like perfect in every way. I adore it. I think the consensus of MZ books is usually that this one everybody loves, even if it's not a top, top favorite for some people, most still love it. Same with Wall, actually. That's the Wall of Winnipeg and Me. I shorten it to Wall sometimes. <laughs> So if you ever see me saying like wall, I'm not actually talking about a wall, I'm talking about the wall of wouldn't pay me. Anyway, Diana and Dallas, just they're fucking everything. The kids in this book were actually incredible. Kids in books, I'm not really a fan of most of the time. Some ruin the romance for me and I feel like they should just not be there. Wait For It is not one of those. If anything, the two kids help out even more on like bringing these characters together and bringing the story together. The kids were actually one of my favorite parts of Wait For It and just the relationship of the kids with Diana, with Dallas, with each other, just amazing. Wait For It, five million exceptional stars. It is incredible. You will not regret this one for sure. All right, y'all, now we've got Dear Erin. This book follows Ruby Santos and she starts writing letters to a soldier as one of those little programs. She has never met him, he has never met her, so she just writes him letters. Letters turn to emails and emails turn to care packages and once a week turns to every single day until they are constantly talking and he becomes her best friend. And then, of course, she ends up falling for him but they have never met. They don't even know what the other person looks like. The first 50 or 60% of this book are just letters, emails, um, sometimes texts, and then it evolves to like a phone call or two, but that's the whole first 60%. You do not get any storyline besides the letters they are writing to each other. You do not even get to see like Ruby's POV yet of her, what she's thinking. You just get the letters in the first 50%. And then the rest, you start to get little by little more until they meet. I would read this one when you are ready for that. But let me just explain that the letters give you so much. I felt like they weren't going to when I picked this up. I was very scared. I was like, okay, a lot of letters, a lot of emails, a lot of texts. Am I even gonna know what these characters are thinking? Am I even gonna get to know them that much through that? And yes, you are. You are 100% gonna get to know them very much. What I loved about this is I feel like in Mariana's other books, like Underlock, Colty, definitely Wall, and wait for it, all the other ones actually. The guy character usually is very grumpy. There's a lot of grumpy sunshine in Mariana books um, where she's very sunshine and he's very grumpy. That's I would say 90% of her books. So you do not get a lot of dialogue from the guy character until like 80% of the book. Dear Aaron is not like that because he was also very sunshine and you got to get dialogue with him throughout the whole book because, you know, through emails and texts and stuff like that. So I loved that. I feel like I got to know Aaron so much through this book and I really, really enjoyed it. I rated it a 4.5 star. It just didn't give me that five star feeling, but I did love it. Coffee break. I'm almost done talking about these, y'all. I'm so proud of myself. I'm not taking as long as I thought I would with this. It's already been an hour and 20 minutes and I'm like, I'm not taking that long. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Anyway, from Luca with love. <laughs> Come with love. Wait, I just realized we got to this. Oh my god, I love this one so much. After Wall, this would be this would be 
From Woke Up With Love follows Jasmine Santos and she is a figure skater and has been for many many years but she has constantly been knocked down, broken bones, uh, lost competitions, just she's been through a lot in the sport and she now is doing partners figure skating and she has one last chance to really make it in this sport but her last chance relies on someone that she's not very fond of and that is Ivan Lugov. He is her best friend's brother and they have hated each other for as long as she can remember but he is one of the most amazing most famous professional figure skaters ever. It's an opportunity that she cannot pass up because obviously she wants to make it in this sport but she hates Ivan and Ivan hates her so there's that. <laughs> Yo okay so this MZ book is grumpy grumpy. It's not Grumpy Sunshine. They are both grumpy. Are you joking? Incredible. The banter in this book, A1. I love all of these books very much, but the banter in Lukov is definitely the best banter there is. They are iconically funny together. They always fight. They are so mean to each other. They do not get along at all, but you get crumbs of them throughout the entire book and you start to see that evolve and it's one of those like they do everything for each other. The figure skating aspect of this book is also incredible. It had me searching up different um, positions and different like figure skating lingos because I wanted to know. Like I wanted to know what the triple lux was. I was like I must know. So I watched figure skating for forever just so I could do it in this book. <laughs> and honestly it is so I have no complaints. This is one of MZ's best books and it has currently been getting a lot of hype as it should. It deserves it. Ivan Lukov is everything. Jasmine Santos is definitely my favorite female character MZ has written from Lukov with Love. If you um, just want to start with MZ's best books and you do not want to go in order or anything like that, From Lukov is a very good one to start because it is one of the best. Next we've got Luna and the Lie. Uh, Luna and the Lie follows Luna. Yeah. <laughs> Very obviously there. She paints and like revamps cars. I don't even know if that makes sense. I don't know much about cars besides the fact that they go vroom vroom in their color. Anyway, she works with cars and she has this boss named Lucas Ripley who one day she tells a lie for, yeah, Luna and the lie. And he feels like he owes her for said lie. That's all I'm gonna tell you about this one because I do not wanna give anything away. That's basically the whole idea of it. You get to see a lot more obviously, but I just don't wanna ruin anything for you. It's like it's Okay, Luna is one of the sweetest main characters I've ever seen. She is so, so nice. Too nice for her own good, to be honest. Um, She's so sweet. And Lucas Ripley is her boss and he happens to be very grumpy, not very nice. You get to see a lot of groveling in this book. If you are a fan of groveling, you will love this. A lot of grumpy sunshine. You will probably love Luna. She is iconic. She's so sweet. It's really hard to hate her, honestly. And I rated it five stars. I loved it. I really, really liked this one. Yeah, five stars for sure, Luna. <laughs> I think it's one of her slowest burns though, I will say. But it is so, so worth it. I adored this one. Yeah, Luna and the Lie. We're almost done. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The best thing. So this book follows Lenny DeMeo or DeMaio. I'm pretty sure it's DeMeo. Lenny DeMeo. She works in a gym. Her grandfather, in fact, owned that gym. And that gym has like the gym aspect to it. And it also has um, the fighting area where they do judo and um, boxing and just fights and all that. She has let go of an ex a little while ago because he did not leave her in the best of terms and one day he just comes back and he wants to explain himself. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna tell you. It is the only second chance romance that MZ has so far. Second chance romance happens to be one of my favorite tropes. I really, really do love that. This one was not my favorite, I will say. I rated it a four star because I still enjoyed it. It just really bored me. Like most of the time I was kind of bored. I didn't love Lenny that much. And Jonah, I kind of felt no connection to him whatsoever. I did like one of the tropes in this book, the surprise one that I'm not gonna tell you. I did like that and I did love that connection, but mostly I was bored. The epilogue was beautiful, but a sad epilogue, but beautiful nonetheless. One of those that after I put down, I kind of never thought about it again. Anyway, moving on. I rated it four stars, nothing special. We are on our second to last book, Shoddy Base. Look at us go, go team. Hands down, let's discuss it. <laughs> So hands down follows Bianca Brennan and she works at a gym. She has a YouTube channel. Love that for her cause same. Anyway, um, she was best friends with Zach Travis when she was a kid. Her cousin was best friends with Zach as well. He is a little bit older than her. So it was always that crush 
that could never be because she loved him, but he obviously only saw her as a friend because they were kids and he was older than her. And then he kind of cut her out of his life and she has no idea why. And so one day he comes waltzing back in and is ready to have his friend back. Everything kind of changes for them. I don't want to tell you too much besides the fact that he's also a quarterback. Did I mention that? Yeah. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> this book. As much as From Luke Off With Love was grumpy grumpy, this book felt like sunshine sunshine. This book was very, very cute. I rated it a 4.5. Just like The Best Thing Is Her Only Second Chance Romance, this one was the only one that was like childhood friends to lovers, which is one of my favorite tropes ever. It remains superior. Childhood friends to lovers is superior. I said what I said. As much as I loved those parts of it, it didn't have a five star feel, but I did adore it. It just had a slower start than the rest of the books. Like it took me a little while to get into it, which is why it was a 4.5. And there was too much miscommunication for me to obsess, but I did really, really like it. We have made it to our final book, Shadi Bays. We did it. Are we ready? All roads lead here. The crowd goes wild. Yeah. This book is superior. Oh my God. I cannot contain myself. I already am so excited to talk about it. This book follows Aurora de la Torre. Does that name not sound powerful? If it sounds powerful, it's because she is powerful. Aurora is going through a very tough situation in her life and is kind of forced to start all over. And so she moves to a, a small town in the mountains where she used to live when she was little. And her landlord, happens to be very grumpy, very hot. Tobias Rhodes. Yeah, all roads lead here. Once again, so punny. Y'all, this was the healthiest relationship I've ever seen any book have. They were everything. Tobias is so grown. You know when you just see like a fucking daddy in a book and you're like, oh my God, he's grown. He's like intelligent, got his shit together. He's not gonna play me. Like that's Tobias. I'm so sorry that I used the word daddy like that, but, but really father like he is uh, no words for tobias rose it doesn't get any better it doesn't and let me just say his kid in this book was so cute <laughs> one of my favorite parts of this book was his kid aurora is amazing like if it wasn't for jasmine santos aurora would be definitely my favorite everything about this book was amazing it was one of those books that I've said before, and I'll say it again, it made me want to go on a hike. It made me want to get outside and just run and really do things with my life. I didn't do any of those things. I definitely stayed sitting, reading the book, but I felt like I wanted to, you know? And that's really important. I didn't hike, but I imagined that I was hiking, thinking it is half the battle. Anyway, this book was so funny too. Rhodes was very grumpy, but soft for her, but hard in all the other ways that matter. <laughs> This book is everything and it makes sense as to why it's MZ's latest published book because it is a masterpiece. She had learned from all the other ones and just basically perfected this one. It is incredible. All roads lead here. Five million stars, infinity stars. Now that I've summarized every single one, let me take a coffee break and we'll continue, please hold. Let me tell you really quick my favorites and then I'll go into all the connections. So if you wanna skip that part, I'll tell you when I get there. <laughs> the way that I put them upside down. <laughs> That's just not gonna do. So let me be very, very honest with you. I cannot pick favorites. Like I can't tell you a top three, a top this, a top that, but I am gonna separate them into tiers. It's three tiers. And hopefully that kind of tells you a little bit about where my mind is at. I would say tier three would be the books that I do not like. I would not reread. I would not recommend just a no in general for me. And that's just these two. Yeah, nothing really much to say about that. Moving on. Tier two would be books that I adored. They were so, so good, but they were just not superior material, but they were still good. And that is these three. The best thing, hands down, and Dear Aaron. Once again, still good, still really liked them. They were just not superior material for me. I would not reread, but I would definitely recommend, you know? And then we have tier one and that is superior. I would reread these until the end of time. I would recommend these to anybody who will listen. And that is these. Um, Wall of Winnipeg, Colty, Underlock, Luna and the Lie, From Luke Off With Love, Wait For It, and All Roads Lead Here. 100,000% I would recommend every single one of these. I love them with all my heart. They're all favorites. They're all five stars. I love these and I will recommend them until the end of time. Yes. Okay, Shawty Mays. Now that we finished talking about the books, telling the stars, telling you my favorites, let me tell you how they all connect. So if you do not want to know this part, you can skip it. Um, I'll say goodbye to you now. I love you so, so much. Lingus, I'll make it easy for you. There are no connections with this one. So in Underlock, you get to see Pins and Needles. And Pins and Needles is a tattoo parlor that 
every single one of these characters goes to when they do need a tattoo. So if you see a character going to a tattoo place, it is usually pins and needles and it does get referenced in her other books. So once you read, oh my god, hello Dex. Once you read Underlock, you'll see pins and needles and you'll see the shop across pins and needles. You'll see the bar next to pins and needles. You'll get to know that setting right there and that will play into the other books. So that's why I always recommend you read Underlock. Now, Colty. In Colty, you do get to see the first pins and needles uh, reference. That is the only reference you have in Colty. Sal and him go to pins and needles and you get to see Dex, you get to see Iris, you get to see the other man who works there, Slim. You get interactions with all of them and that's really cool. Then in Rhythm, you do get Colty mentions in it and you also get a Robbie Lingus mention. And also one of Gabby's cousins is teammates with Sal in Colty. So you get two Colty mentions in Rhythm. Then in The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, you do get a Cloud Collision mention, which is the band in Rhythm. And you also get to see Vanessa design a really cool tattoo. And that is for one of the guys at Pins and Needles, which was really cool as well. But those are the only mentions in The Wall. Now, up to this point, in all of these it has been very little references like everything i'm saying is very little it's just really quick but the next books i'm going to talk about the references get a little more um deep so let me try to explain it to the best of my abilities <laughs> so diana castillas she is cousins with sal castillas who you meet in colty and she's also vanessa's best friend in the wall of winnipeg and me you do see diana in the wall of winnipeg and me which is why i recommend reading in this specific order because you get to see Diana in the wall and become obsessed with her and want to know more about her story and then you get her story and wait for it. I feel like it's more um, worth the wait <laughs> to get her story. Anyway, also in Wait For It, Diana becomes very good friends with Trip, who is best friends with Sunny and Sunny is Iris's brother in Underlock. So in Underlock, you meet Sunny and you meet Trip. And then in Wait For It, Diana becomes really good friends with Trip. They're part of the same motorcycle club. So the motorcycle club does get mentioned and you do see Trip on here. She, in fact, works across the street from Pins and Needles and they go to the Mayhem Bar as well, which is the bar that you start to get to know in Underlock is where the whole entire motorcycle club um, hangs out. You do see it on here. She works right across the street. Trip works right across the street as well. So. You see that setting that I explained in Underlock, you see it in Wait For It. There are also some amazing cameos in Wait For It that if you were to read Wait For It first, it would spoil um, Underlock, Colty, and Wall. So that's why I would wait to read this one. Some amazing cameos, some amazing moments that you get to enjoy a lot if you've read the other ones. So Dear Aaron, not much in this one besides the fact that um, Ruby loves Cloud Collision, which is the band in Rhythm. But in Dear Aaron, a big thing is Ruby Santos is Jasmine Santos' sister. So you get to see a little bit of Jasmine in here and get to know her and get to know what she wants to do and how important figure skating is to her. You become very intrigued by Jasmine in Dear Aaron. So when you get to From Lukov With Love, it's even better because you're so excited for Jasmine's story. So I would recommend reading this one before Lukov. And now here we are, Lukov. You get Jasmine's story and you get to know the Santos family a little bit more. As I said, there's not a lot of mentions in this one or connections besides the fact that Jasmine is Ruby's sister. So this is why if you really just want to dive into one that you are just interested in, Lukov is a very good one. I love you. I love you so much. So next, Luna and the Light. Not a lot of connections in this one either besides the fact that you meet someone who you get a book for later. I'll explain when I get there. But uh, Ripley did happen to have some business with the Reapers who were a motorcycle club that was mentioned in Underlock a lot and you get to see him deal with that in Luna and the Lie. So it's really cool to get back into that like motorcycle club aspect of it all. Um, but that's pretty much it. The best thing. Remember when I said that in Luna and the Lie you meet someone who gets a book? That's Lenny. So Lenny is Luna's best friend in Luna and the Lie and you get to know her a little bit and then you get her story in The Best Thing. Going along with The Best Thing, in The Best Thing you meet Bianca because she is the receptionist for the gym that Lenny manages um, and owns with her family and you get to see very little of Bianca. But then you get her story in Hands Down and she's still a receptionist at the Mayo Gym. Um, which, like I said, you get to know in the best thing. And 
something big about hands down, let me explain. In the wall of Winnipeg and me is where you meet Zach Travis, is where you really, really meet him. Like one of those characters that was a side character, but important enough where you got to know him very, very well. Um, he was Aiden's roommate and Vanessa became very, very close to him. And he was the quarterback for the team that Aiden plays in as well. He was called Big Texas. And you got to see all of that in the wall of Winnipeg and me. You fell in love with Zach probably. And then you get his story in hands down, which is really cool. So I would read The Wall of Winnipeg for sure before you read Hands Down, just so you can fall in love with Zach and then get his book. And hold on, I'm not done with Hands Down yet. You do get cameos from Vanessa and Aiden. And also you get a very surprising cameo of Ivan and Jasmine as well. Nothing crazy, kind of just a mention, but it's there. And in From Lukov, there's a magazine that Ivan and Jasmine um, pose for. And on the cover of that magazine, they said that there's a football player on it and the football player that posed for it was in fact Zach. So that's how they kind of knew each other. So yeah, pretty cool there. And lastly, the latest book, All Roads Lead Here. There are pretty much no connections in this one. There is just a Colty mention. No connections, still one of the best ones though. <laughs> Didn't even need it. Anyway, Shadi Bays, I'm done. I finished. Who would have thought that I'd finally reached this moment? Not me, that's for sure. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was worth the wait. I was working on it for quite some time, so I'm so sorry that it took long. I wanted to make sure I had read every single one before I made this video, just so that it could be, you know, a really good video for you and I can actually give opinions on these books. If I missed something, I'm so sorry, but I'm pretty sure I covered everything. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this helped you if you wanna dive into MZ. I hope you enjoyed this, Shotty Base. I love you very, very much. I am tired of hearing myself talk, so I'm gonna go. Have a great day. Every day.